Tompkins was great. Really surprised me, says Paul. How great is Sam Tompkins? In what sense? In every sense. <laughs> from, from the Sam Tompkins okay, so yeah, film thing. So Sam obviously came on quite a lot in Channel 4, and he was he was brilliant, actually. Fantastic. Got on really well with him, and I think as a broadcaster, um, surprised me, because I thought he was he was very articulate and eloquent. Um, and he's from Milton Keynes. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so basically spoke to him last year after he decided to retire and said, would you be up for making a documentary with me? And, and which looks back on his life and profiles him and then looks ahead to the last few games of his career, hopefully ending, ending at Old Trafford. So um, to be a bit different, he's, he wore a microphone in matches, which is sort of unusual. We sort of did it on the sly. Um, <laughs> and um, he wore one for the last four games of his career. So the, the Leeds game away, and he just so happened to have like one of the best games he's had for years in that game. I wonder if that was anything to do with it being Leeds. I think, yeah, well, this is part of one of the stories that's come out. So um, the Salford game, where he gets simbined and scores a try and kicks a drop goal, pretty much the good, the bad and the ugly, he called it, from, from him, sums him up really on the field. And um, the Saints game, which, you know, we all know about what he did in that game with the last minute try. So incredible scenes. And actually not winning it was was sad for us because... You know, we wanted him to go out on a high, but actually the story of, of sort of the pain of, of loss was um, was amazing. He's been so open, he's been fantastic, and uh, some of the some of the insight we've got, which you wouldn't never you wouldn't usually get that from a top level player, uh, has been fantastic. So yeah, I'm really excited for the launch of the film. Which is one. So we're going to do a, a night on the 28th of February at the Edge in Wigan, which is um, tickets are on sale now, as you have to say. Uh, at keytickets.com uh, forward slash the edge and um, yeah basically we've got an all star cast for a Q&A so, that, so we're going to do a, a Jenna Brooks is presenting from Sky Sports we've got England coach Sean Wayne England captain George Williams Josh Charnley and Tommy Makinson who all feature in the film uh, we interviewed them all or he, meet, he meets them within the film and um, they will talk about incidents that feature in the film but also that they were involved with with Sam. Sam will do the, the Q&A as well, but it's a brilliant venue, huge thousand seater can hold up to, um, red red carpet, champagne reception, but we're also obviously gonna watch the film. And um, I just wanted to basically put something on, or we wanted to put something on where fans could come along and celebrate. Sam never had his own uh, testimonial, so it's a, it's a sort of uh, event to celebrate his career, I think. Can you sell that kind of product to Amazon Prime, who were known for their yeah. um, Netflix now are, are not interested in live sport, but they love sport documentaries. Simply plus all of these areas, is that now open to you if you've made a documentary like this? Yeah, you would normally make. We've sort of done it the other way around. You would normally have something commissioned, paid for, and then made it. Whereas uh, Jam Films, my, me and business partner, we've essentially funded it ourselves um, because we just wanted to just to do it basically. And Sam's come on board and and being fantastic to wear the mic and everyone who's been involved has been great. The ideal would be to have it on Amazon, have it on the BBC, have it on Channel 4, Sky Documentaries. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But I think we're going to do uh, another screening, hopefully in London, where we'll invite TV executives to come along. Um, and yeah, try and sell it. I mean, for me, Rugby League is the best spot. It's got the best characters. It's got the best communities who play it, people who... You know, live and live and die by it and I think we need to get those stories out there and I think for me love love him or hate him Sam Tompkins has got um he, he's sort of been this person the pantomime villain on the field but also he's backed it up with his performances but his story of of how low he went and I think if you watch the Ronnie O'Sullivan documentary and the mental health side of things and understanding why he was the player he was on the field and why he maybe had that temperament it's something that comes out in the film, and it's it's really interesting. Sounds fascinating. I'd love to. I would love to watch it. I mean, it was. A, How was he with you? Well, it was a challenge on the field. It was a challenge, <laughs> but you know that. Yeah. You know that, and that probably comes across in the documentary. Yeah. You know, I've had plenty of conversations off the field from him, and this is this is a di- slightly different. I'm not saying completely, but he's different bloke. Yeah. I think some people are like that. You know, John Wilkins probably a little bit like that. He crossed the white line, and I think by his own admission, that sometimes it just, no matter what you said, it was black was white or whatever. Um, it was a challenge. It, I, I go back to I think I think it might have been one of the first. Um, I forget the, what did we call them? Not the All Star Games, where the Exiles, the Exiles games. 
think it was the first one, wasn't he? He got booed uh, at, Headingley. at Headingley. I was on the line. It's one of the reasons why I love Lee. Yeah. Well, a well, great segue because that's a big part of the documentary, mm. and I obviously don't want to give too much away. But we go we go heavily into that, and I think it's. Um, that's an amazing story in itself, being booed by your own fans and what effects that would have on you as a young bloke at the time. So, yeah, you were there on the day. Was it Was yeah. it, Was it? it audible it then? Be, yeah, yeah. Completely. I mean, obviously I was on the line, so I was yeah. in front of the South Stand for one and a half, in front of the North Stand, so you couldn't help but hear yeah. it. Um, but I would, all I would say to Sam is imagine having that everywhere you go <laughs> <laughs> as a referee. Yeah. But no, I get, I get the point when it's your own fans, you don't expect that. And I would say from that point of view, that's almost the low, but he... I would say turned it round that certainly his, his appearances on, on Channel 4 uh, presenting and, or as a guest, talent guest, whatever you want to call him, I thought it was great. And again, the more you see different sides of people mm. outside of their usual environment, you can understand that individual a little bit more and you see a different aspect. So I, th I would say, you know, we wasn't getting booed towards the back end of his career, was he, by opposition mm. fans? Um, I think people recognise him as a little bit of a pantomime villain, really. Yeah, and he played up to it. I yeah, think he definitely exactly. did. And, and it, But it's his will to win. I've never met anybody who just wants to win as much as he does. And I think he crossed the line and he would say that. But at the same time, he's doing it because he just wanted to win no matter what. And it, um, But because he backed it up with the, the tries he scored in big games, you know, he went over to Australia and he's always he's always done it. So, um, fair play. When's the premiere in Perpignan? Because that's the champagne reception we will do. <laughs> <laughs> dubbed into French. So <laughs> we will do that, and that is going to happen. Yeah, the, we, I was out there last week filming the last bits for the documentary. and um, In his vineyard. In his vineyard, yeah. yeah. In his vineyard. And uh, we are going to do a, a show in France, because a, a lot the first clip we put on the, the Jam Films Instagram, um, it was interesting because we had hundreds of people in France saying, you know, this looks amazing, can we see it, and messaging him. Which was great, you know, and I think some of the some of the clips we've we've put on have been seen by over two hundred thousand people. So that's also great for the for the game. And we haven't Absolutely. really even started promoting Absolutely. it yet. Yeah. So how many people do you think have sent messages to Sam asking how bitter his wine is? <laughs> it must, it must, be, it must be in the tap. Especially from the Leeds post club area. Especially you speak French in the in yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I always Without a Wigan accent. Well, I always found it f funny listening to Michael McAlorum speaking French. I don't know why. He does have a well, he's not even from Wigan, but yeah. He does have his accent. Yeah. As does Steve McNamara. You're just thinking about other former sportsmen who've tried to speak French in the past, but we don't want to speak about them on this program. How many times has he been on the front cover of the magazine? Because he was on the first well, one. Well, that, that was the thing. That was one of the uh, one of the things that that very first magazine in was it 2012, the question is being asked mm -hmm. is he a niggly player? Mm -hmm. So it's gone back throughout his entire career. Mm -hmm. What's going to make this stand out in, to the non rugby league fan who is a sports documentary now because there are about a million of them out there everyone's got a documentary about yeah. whatever now so what's going to appeal to people about Sam Tunkin's story outside of rugby league good question I think that was the thing that we needed to, to, to hit because the average person who likes sport isn't going to watch a rugby league documentary unless they are gripped by something which is different and new and, and I think him wearing a microphone in the grand final is incredible and him doing what he did in the Saints game wearing a microphone him, you know, <laughs> having go at other players, getting simbined. These are the clips which I think are going to help sell the documentary outside. But it's the human side as well. It's the, the mental health side. It's what he went through when he was told in January he would never play again. He had to go under the knife and um, he was told he shouldn't, he shouldn't play 5% chance. I don't want to give too much away. Mm. But he, he yes, yeah, so I think it's the human side. And I've had conversations with... Other companies trying to trying to you know maybe speaking to Netflix and trying to see whether we can get a, a, something off the ground. And the thing that they always say is human stories. You know the sport we have got covered. Rugby league is an incredible thing to watch, but it's um, it's finding those like human interest stories which will appeal outside of this bubble that we all live in. <laughs> the fight club that is rugby league. <laughs> Paul just how you funded it. It's self funded. This, you yeah. Know, yeah. Well, we've seen players wear microphones before, like actually, on BBC Channel yes. Cup games, haven't we? We have. They oh. didn't do that for very long. I wonder yeah. whether... Is, is that because one of, a certain player, I'm not going to name, completely played up to the camera well, that, that like be, a bird? That was, <laughs> be, that was going to be my question. Uh, did he have long hair? Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. Um, yeah, that was going to be my question. I mean, he's a smart bloke, so mm. he, 
obviously he knew it wasn't going out, he knew it wasn't going out to a BBC audience which yeah. is different so it, that's almost an immediate thing so at half time they were playing clips weren't they of the audience mm-hmm. it's, it's for a different purpose but do you think in in the game he'd just actually forgotten about it yeah, yeah. it did yeah yeah and it's fascinating some of the insight uh, inside the tunnel you know before the grand final the, the grand final sequence obviously is and then the end and, and you know um, but yeah he didn't he, he, he basically said he just forgets yeah I mean, that's what he said. He obviously had four of the best games or three of the best games he's had. I think he would do with the microphone. It's yeah. not yeah. something that's noticeable. It's probably yeah. way on. It was just like the camera on you. Yeah. He was just okay. on his back. Right. We yeah. just basically yeah. he just sellotapes into his back, which, and he was doing that before games. Which again, I still I still can't believe a player of that level. He's just sellotaping a microphone to the back of his shirt. Well, he used to wear a GPS at the top. Of yeah, the back but he's doing. Shirt you know, what I mean, there's not many sportsmen who yeah. would be because a lot of sportsmen are in their own zone and need yeah. to do things. Sam was just like, yeah, fine, let's do it. So when obviously the BBC commissioned Celebrity Gladiators, which they found, <laughs> we need to push Sam Tompkins onto it because he's going to be the person who's going to win. It might be Viper. It might be Viper if you've watched oh, it. It'd be better than Viper. <laughs> <laughs> oh. read, the, read the next issue of the magazine. <laughs> I'm looking out next week. Out next week. Yeah. Is it just called Tompkins? You know, it's called The Last Chance. The Last Chance. Tom Kinn's The Last Chance, yeah. So we filmed, uh, it's all the way through. We've got, with his mum and obviously with his family, uh, all agreed to do it. I mean, initially it was a bit like, oh, not sure whether they all want to be involved. They were mic'd up during the grand final. So we've got all the emotion of that. Um, with his wife, he's got four kids who are all bilingual as well. You know, we've been out to France a few times. So yeah, we've put a lot of effort in and I think Sam has as well. And um, just want to tell the story. I, I don't think there's many sportsmen, and I won't ham it up too much, I'm sorry, but... Who I think I think have kind of who've got the level of what, what Sam has brought to the game in different in different ways. So enjoy. what about honesty? Because yeah. the other thing is there are people that, as you say, played up to cameras, mm-hmm. and you don't get that authenticity. Yeah. There are certain periods of Sam's life that he wouldn't be as proud of yeah. as others. Mm-hmm. Is all that covered? Yeah, he's, we talk about the difficulties that you know they've, they've been through. I think he is an honest person. Like he's he's. He's what you see is what you get, as they say, and I think he would never shy away from um, being who who he is. I think, yeah, it is an honest tale, and it's what's and all. So enjoy, please. <laughs> Normally, you would you would make something based around a commission, and then have a commission editor uh, look at it, and then it goes on the television. We're doing it the other way around. We're making the film and then selling it, and uh, I don't see why why we can't sell it. I think it's a great story. I just want it to be seen by as many people as possible, and I know Sam does. So I think I think, I think yeah. he'd be keen to do an art in Leeds. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. No, I think you know he is keen, think, and I th- and I think I think look out for the clips. Yeah, look look out for the clips because I think all rugby league fans want to watch rugby league on television, and and you know we've never seen we've never seen a documentary based around one player. We've never seen that. It's never been made. No one's ever done it. So um, yeah, it's been amazing to do that and. Uh, Hopefully, it's going to be the, the first of many of these, like like you said earlier on. I think it's for the sport to grow. Let's make the stars of the, of the players and let's tell their stories. Mm-hmm.